After being together for over two decades, Carlos and Richard have created a beautiful life for themselves in the quiet suburbia of Canton, Georgia. The dads first met on an online dating site where they talked through instant messages and telephone calls for a year until meeting in person. They tied the knot years later and started a beautiful new chapter in their love story. After their I do's, they decided that they were ready to start their family. However, life had different plans. Carlos and Richard struggled for 12 years to become dags trying both surrogacy and adoption. After jumping through many hoops and experiencing considerable heartache, an opportunity for independent adoption presented itself to the husbands and they decided to go for it. First, their son, born September 4, 2016, joined their family, followed a little over a year late by their daughter, who was born September 22, 2017. Now both children have been with their dad since birth. Now. These two same gender loving dads have the little boy and the little girl that they always wanted and their family is officially complete. Carl was started a job at the mall and with the Great American Cookie Company of all places. And his employee came to him and said she was pregnant and didn't know what to do with it. And um, so that kind of started our process because we, we gave her, you know, that, that we would be interested. So we said, you know, there are options out there if you ever decide adoption, you know, we would be interested. Um, and it's, it's been the most amazing experience. I think we both always wanted to be parents because we always wanted to be able to give our kids everything that we've had mm -hmm. and everything that we haven't had. And for us, that, that comes very different in how, where we were raised and how we were raised. Um, so it's been a, it's been fun trying to blend and mesh our lives together, our family's lives together, and give those experiences you know, to our kids. I will jump in there. That's mostly that. That's a lot of me. That that is a lot of me. I think we early on had a real understanding of this is what we're doing for parenting. All right we kind of taken some of what we know from the years of experience that we've had both being foster parents and there's literally 19 years different between myself and my sister so there's that to the, whole to the point that when we first met I, we were changing her diapers right and now we attended her high school graduation so it's <laughs> so it's 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 a it's been a long time coming like our story is so intertwined and so out there but for us it was we had a a general understanding going in. Ours is a little different. We do the whole lead parent, co-parent kind of parenting where it is lead parent kind of stays there, does make sure everything is done to a, to a T and then co-parent comes in and makes sure kind of buttons up making sure everything, you know, the, the T's are crossed and the I's are dotted. We have a great understanding with us though. Um, I'm more of the disciplinarian sometimes, but for the most part, now I'd say 95% of the time, I'm the disciplinarian, and then he's the fun dad. And he enjoys being the fun dad, and I'm okay with that. I think ours was a little different. We went into it knowing that we have a lot of friends that are social workers and a, a lot of the like. So we went into it knowing that DFAX's main goal is re reunification of families. So I think for us, we kind of went into it that way. And for us, we also went into it with knowing we were gonna be foster parents and knowing we were gonna to wanna to adopt too. So it was that dichotomy of kind of like walking that tightrope of knowing, hey, when it comes to foster, I mean, for us, it, it was very much of a, it was, it was very easy for us to say, all right, we know like we're here to help these kids. Like that is literally what, why we are here. Do what we can and do everything we can. We also knew that the job was reunification. So we spent that time Focusing on our family, but helping these kids for a while. So it's it's an experience. It, yeah, it is an experience. It's not for the faint of heart, but it's worth it. But if we had never started that process, we yeah. would never have had you know, these, these opportunities too. So. You know, again, I think despite what 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 your beliefs are on abortion, right? When kind of Carlos, I guess, told me that that was a birth mom, that that was an option she was looking at. 
I think that was for me the time to say, you know what, let's do this. Let's might as well. Like yeah. it, it wasn't like a. Yeah, it was just like a. That was our. Oh, it was oh, kind okay. of our our, our aha, aha moment, moment, so to speak. And then out of the blue, he got a phone call from her, and she said, you know, you were right. There are other options. I've decided I want you and Richard to adopt, and that's what started it for us. And you know, that's how Devin came to be. And and I will tell you that. I've cried three times in my life. Well, four times in my life. My grandparents' death, the day that he and I got married, the day my sister died, and the day he was born. And it was just the happiest day of my life because I got to experience pretty much the entire birth process. I actually got to pretty much deliver him in the hospital as well because we were in the hospital and the nursing staff didn't think she was ready to deliver and he came out. Oh, no. <laughs> and then literally, I mean, we had, Took us about six months to finalize his adoption. Walked out of the courthouse on his adoption day. And then we literally walked out of the courtroom on his adoption day. And a lady asked us, would you ever want to adopt again? And we said, yes, that was on a Friday. I called her on Monday and six months later she was here. I think it was easier until they got on, until they got to this age, because for a lot of time they relied on us. You know, we would feed them, bathe them, pick them up, carry them everywhere. And as they started to get more independent, it got a little tougher. It throws um, kinks in the, in the plans of where, you know what, these are things that we need to get done. Ooh, something shiny, they're a kid, something takes their attention away from what it should be. It's getting more and more difficult now because they, they have, fr we have friends now. They have personalities they want, too. Yeah. I mean, that, that no, affects itself. And you go to school. And you oh, go to school, you school yes, yes, yes. And, and you have a personality when it comes to picking out clothes and things like that. The routines that used to be really quick, hey, here's your clothes, let's get on, let's get dressed. Ooh, I don't like the way that looks together. Yeah, we have Can we? Shoes, or the, the shorts can't touch the knee, they have to be above the knees. Yeah, everything's gotta be colorful. And I feel like a stylist for my child. I literally come in here with looks. Every morning, I come in with three to four looks mm -hmm. where I'm like, here you go. Pick your, pick, pick, pick. Because yep. we don't have all that. Literally, that's where we are. Uh, I want them to, to know that they were always loved. And I want them to know what love is. Um, I want them, no matter what, and through the pandemic, there's been, there's been times you know, where, where we've had disagreements and fights and, you know, the, there's a struggle there because Thanks. life has completely changed. But I want them to know that whether they have two dads, two moms, a mom or a dad, whatever the case is, that there was never a day that these two weren't loved. And that shows, you know, in, in the way that they were, they're being raised, their grandparents, you know, friends, you know, I mean, knock on wood, we really haven't had any issues with people feeling like, or us feeling like people are discriminating against us because, you know, we're family. We have amazing neighbors, um, you know, always willing to support us. You know, the family over across the street, he's a, he's a youth pastor. And, you know, when, we, when he first moved in, he went back to over for dinner. And we're like, oh, really God, like, oh, here we go. What is this going to be? And it was, you know, tell us about you. He's like, oh, my God, how'd you guys meet? What's going on? Just like, oh, my God, you're gay in the street. And all, <laughs> all the kids play and all love each other now. Together. And yeah. Easy question. Go for it. And, and I would not do international adoption either. The way I looked at it is there's enough kids in this country that need homes. And while we were blessed and thankful that we got newborns and got to experience it from day one um, we would have taken any child at that point to give them a home yeah um, you know I, you asked earlier the question about foster care it will be the first to tell you the first kid that came into our house i wanted to fix i wanted to help and, and he and i grew a very tight bond at first and i think unfortunately i finally realized that they didn't become the way they are overnight. I wasn't going to fix it overnight. And really his goal was to try to manipulate me as much as he could because that's what he did. And that's what, what he was taught. So um, that became very hard. But my goal was to give kids in this, in this country homes. <laughs>